Hello everyone, good afternoon. I am Prasoon Agrawal from EQ International Magazine. And today here I am at the booth of Vikram Solar at REI India Expo 2017. Vikram Solar is a leading solar energy solutions provider specializing in high efficiency PV module manufacturing and comprehensive EPC solutions. With an international presence in more than five continents, Vikram Solar is an active contributor in shaping the solar revolution in India. Vikram Solar's annual PV module production capacity stands at an amazing 1 gigawatt. And to present Vikram Solar today, we have with us Mr. Ivan Saha, who is the business head of solar manufacturing, and Mr. Karunesh Kumar Chaturvedi, who is the head of corporate affairs. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. So, first of all, sir, I would like to begin with a brief introduction about Vikram Solar and uh, what sort of product offerings, what different product offerings does it have for the Indian solar market? So, Vikram Solar has been uh, in operations for the last 10 years. Uh, we just celebrated our 10th anniversary last year. Uh, we started uh, in 2006, had our first lines established in 2008. And since then, steadily grown from a very small capacity of about uh, uh, 15 megawatt initially to about a gigawatt today. Our products are sold uh, in, um, in various markets across the world. And I think one of the uh, biggest USPs that our products enjoy is, is quality. Our products are known to be um, above average uh, in terms of quality and reliability and are uh, safe um, investments for um, developers and EPC players. Uh, for the Indian market, we have um, products starting from uh, 10 watt peak to about uh, 350 watt peak, uh, 60 cell and 72 cell, cut cells as well as full cells, um, polycrystalline principally and uh, right now we have um, introduced a monocrystalline uh, module family called Somera uh, which is also can be used for 1500 volt system uh, system voltage which reduces the cost of uh, um, balance of systems and the overall LCOE uh, for solar. So, can you also uh, throw some figures out sir, for us? How much modules have you uh, presently supplied in the Indian market and what is your expectation for the coming year? So, overall, uh, I don't know that uh, I, I don't I, I have a total figure of about 850 megawatt that we have supplied to global markets which includes principally to the Indian, maybe about to the extent of 70-80% is to the Indian market uh, over the last 10 years. So, uh, recently, sir, we have seen that, uh, you know, uh, various developers keeping solar tariffs in the price range of 2.5 to 3 per kilowatt. So, how does that affect solar manufacturers, panel manufacturers in, in, in India? So, um, the price war is being fought on the, from, by the developers on, on the project cost, on the, on the tariffs, um, on, the, on the cost of delivered energy. So, Vikram Solar um, um, has been challenged because when you have a tariff of, uh, of you know, anywhere around two and two and a half rupees or uh, um, that kind of numbers, you always have to, you know, um, estimate what should be the module cost in order to achieve that kind of numbers. But uh, we believe that uh, price um, is is a price reduction is a is a is a temporary phenomena but what will remain is is the quality of the module so yes there have been very aggressive uh, bidding prices for solar projects but when you translate into module um, um, module uh, price that prices are really, really low. And uh, Vikram Solar, um, at Vikram Solar, we think that those low module prices are detrimental to quality. So if you are uh, getting module modules at that kind of prices from um, any other place other than um, India, mainly China, 
then you need to be really, really sure that you are getting the right quality at that kind of prices. Because uh, quality comes with the price, with the cost, and that cost of quality or the cost of, um, you know, manufacturing for quality materials is always, uh, cannot be matched with the, with the lowest price. The developer's argument is that, that they have quality practices in build by which they can take care of those kind of module, um, you know, um, coming out of uh, China, uh, you know, lower, lower price modules coming out of China. But I would like to have a word of caution because uh, all module manufacturers, tier one module manufacturers, they have really uh, at least um, a dozen different kind of bill of materials and the performance of each bill of material varies. So what you see today, may that uh, bill of materials can actually degrade very fast, very quickly over a period of 25 years. These modules come with a warranty for 25 years. Some of the other manufacturers also back it up with the with the insurance, which according to us doesn't make real sense because these are these large volumes cannot be really protected by insurance and the terms of insurance also are, are not very clear from the leading insurance providers. So all in all, uh, uh, you need to be, uh, you know, really sure about uh, the right quality uh, coming in because solar is a 25 year game and uh, all your uh, return on investments are calculated over that period. Um, and that is where uh, I think Vikram Solar can make a real difference because uh, whatever we, we produce, we have only, only a fixed set of bill of materials or materials that we use in, in, the, in the modules. And that is same for domestic as well as international markets. And these uh, materials have been tested by international uh, quality labs to show the highest performance and these modules have performed uh, uh, you know exceedingly well over long uh, periods of very aggressive testing by these labs and we have been recently awarded with a dnv gl top performer uh, award for that which is which speaks volumes of our quality it's not us telling it it's the um, the third party uh, testing labs who is telling this so that's where the real uh, differentiation comes Talking about pricing, Mr. Saha, where do you see the price uh, range going for modules per watt in the in the in the coming few months? It's actually a, a bit of a crystal ball grazing, if you say, uh, because uh, we see the demand to be very aggressive uh, uh, over the next quarter. So till December, uh, we don't see uh, that much reduction in module prices. I mean, it's in China at least. Uh, where the tier one modules are not going to be maybe half a cent, maybe one cent uh, lower than what it is today till December. January, end of January, there will be uh, this new Chinese policy that will be announced. So the period from February onwards till June, it will be again the price would, uh, uh, would go up because of the high demand from the Chinese market. Uh, in Indi for Indian uh, projects, I think that is the period when you need to procure modules and set it up for, um, uh, you know, in the period of December to January to February. That is a period all the developers will procure modules for uh, their projects which have to be commissioned by March or by June. In that kind of a time period from October till next June, I don't see prices uh, coming down or they will be actually forming up post uh, January. Now, coming to the technology parts, uh, where do you think the technology roadmap is going to go uh, in, in, in terms to module manufacturing? I mean, we have seen upcoming technologies like 1500 volt, double class, bifacial cell. So what are your views on the technology front uh, uh, for the module manufacturing units? So uh, for modules, yes, there are, um, uh, first of all, module technology is a function of the cell technology. So whatever cell is available, uh, uh, the module uh, technology uh, can adapt to that. In the near term, cell technology is going to be mainly dominated by mono perk. 
passive radiometer rear contact cells in the range of the cell efficiencies of about 21 percent 21 21 and a half percent bifacial is the other type of uh, cell where uh, there is a, a good uh, you know chance of n type bifacial cells reaching about uh, 21 22 percent also in the ne near future so adapting those to those uh, technologies uh, you will have a mono Park module with a uh, module area efficiency of about 20% and a uh, uh, bifacial module where you will have an efficiency of about 21-21.5% single side efficiency. And when you consider uh, the extra albedo reflection for the case of bifacial, you will get another 15-20% extra energy gain. But beyond that, there are certain tricks on the module side. For example, there are better anti-reflection coated glass. There is uh, this uh, half cut cells um, and, um, you know, a new technology which is coming up, which is called shingles uh, on the module side, which is which will differentiate uh, from the cell. So whatever efficiency cell you have, the new technologies that will come around for the modules will bump up the efficiency of on the module you have the same cell you have a traditional technology of module vis-a-vis -vis you have a half cut technology or a shingles technology you can bump up the efficiency by half a percent or absolute power by about 5 to 10 watt so that is the roadmap that is being uh, uh, planned right now uh, can you also share some uh, any re any recent case study or any recent noteworthy project where your modules must have been used and how has been the performance of that particular project so uh, recently, um, I'll talk about um, uh, a very, um, very milestone um, project of ours. Recently, the Helsinki airport got solarized with Vikram solar modules. Uh, Finnair had their cargo terminal. Uh, uh, we had about we have about 350 kilowatt of uh, Vikram solar modules on. Finnair. Actually, they initially placed a small order and they followed up with another bigger order. So the entire cargo terminal of Finnair on at Helsinki Airport is now solarized with Vikram Solar Modules. So this is a real, real achievement for from our side because there was uh, Finland experiences um, a huge amount of snow. Um, uh, Performance-wise, the modules are, are exposed to very cold temperatures, etc., etc. Uh, which puts our, our modules to the strictest possible test of performance. And I'm glad to report that they are performing exceedingly well. And Finnair uh, was extremely happy with the performance of our modules. Talking about, you know, performance in different climatic conditions. I mean, in India itself, we see uh, so many different climatic conditions. So how has been the performance in, 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 in these different regions, be it a coastal area or, or some mountainous regions or a deserty region in Rajasthan? So how has been your experience in, in these different regions? So as I said, we have one bomb fitting all climatic conditions. So we do not, so we prepare a bill of materials which is fit for the harshest, the most severe climatic conditions. We have modules installed in, um, um, uh, you know, in, in Rajasthan. Uh, we have modules installed in very, very, uh, you know, uh, humid areas of coastal areas of Andhra and Gujarat and other places. Uh, we have modules uh, installed on, on on high altitudes. Uh, we have module installed on 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 uh, you know water bodies. Our uh, the common thread, the common um, uh, you know experience in in all of these is that. Before we start a project, we promise amount a kind of generation to the customer. In most of the cases, I would say 90% of the cases, we exceed the generation level, which speaks volumes of our uh, um, um, of our uh, you know uh, of the quality criteria, quality quotient of our modules. Also, we have very uh, extremely low um, customer returns. On accounts of quality so performance wise our modules have really really performed um, and i'm talking about you know um, benchmark to 
none of the in Indian manufacturers. But for example, this DNVGL, this testing was done and there were only five or six international players who were adjust, adjudged as uh, like Trina, like Ingli, like uh, Sun Power, like Solar World. Uh, these uh, modules, their modules were at the same level as Vikram Solar modules. So it's like uh, benchmarking with the best in the world. So uh, coming back to the, you know, uh, government policies towards uh, solar uh, projects in India, I mean, the ambitious, ultra ambitious, I should say, uh, target of 100 gigawatt by 2002. First of all, do you think is it achievable? And but a lot of people don't think so. Is it is achievable in the in the in the set timeline? So when do you think will we be able to achieve 100 gigawatt solar? See, I think um, um, it's not a question whether it is achievable. If you ask me, yes, it is achievable. Because me as being a solar manufacturer and a part of that uh, dream that Mr. Modi has built in, I would say yes, it is achievable. Uh, but even if you achieve uh, 70 80 percent of it or not part of it or we don't achieve certain but the the change in the environment of power that this ambitious solar program has brought in cannot be uh, you know measured just by what percent of achievement has happened so the way that the power people perceive today solar power as being a main source of energy rather than being an alternate or a you know second fiddle to the thermal energy so uh, that change of perception has really brought in uh, uh, has has changed the impression about india uh, in front of the entire world investors um, um, you know uh, uh, political uh, uh, i mean other political leaders of other countries they view India as a superpower. So, um, yes, there are a lot of challenges, but I don't think achievement uh, percentage can be a real metric about the change, uh, about the, uh, you know, uh, about the impact that this this solar mission has brought on to, not to forget the, the social impact, which is, which, is, which is something which nobody talks about. But uh, the social impact on the quality improvement in quality of life of people where electricity could not have reached in the next uh, 20 years, that impact, the social impact has been phenomenal. And I think we are passing through a very, very trans, uh, I mean, um, uh, you know, transitional period of our, of the history of our country that energy security is really being um, implemented for the common man. And that social impact is 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 the real real impact of the solar mission. How big a share of that hundred gigawatt pie does Vikram Solar uh, target to achieve? So again, as I said, uh, we are not a developer, so we are not uh, targeting any development on that hundred gigawatt. No, none of that will be Vikram Solar projects. But we will, to the extent possible we will pay, play a key role in all the module supplies to DCR, Make in India projects, as well as to rooftops and open category projects as a module manufacturers will supply them. Module. One last question, sir, on the policy front. How do you see the policy? I mean, yes, the target is a definitely ambitious, but how has been the policy uh, 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 environment to support that particular target? I think the government has shown a lot of intent uh, of of bringing together uh, the different stakeholders we were who were earlier uh, probably not believing in this uh, in this whole solar mission um, and brought in some radical changes be it on the on the finance side be it on the implementation side be it on the on the on the uh, you know uh, the state discom regularization of the discom um, open access um, um, you know, bundling of power, uh, all of that, rooftop incentives, these, all these have been uh, clearly uh, shown a very strong intent from the policy side. India is a vast country, policy changes are at the state level, at the uh, um, 
at the federal level there are uh, several impacts of policies so some states have lagged behind some states have gone ahead in implementing most of these policies uh, on what we would like to see is more of a policy framework to support the manufacturing sector which is actually raring to go and be part of the mission to to supply um, um, I mean, today India is buying almost 90% of the modules from China. Uh, policy support to supply, um, you know, at least 30, 40, 50% of that uh, that whole pie uh, is something that I think all manufacturers are are uh, are waiting for, and the policy support to make that happen is should be the clearly the next step uh, for the government to consider. All right, Mr. Ivan. So with that, sir, we'll bring an end to this interview. Thank you so much for your time and this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Ivan Saha. Thank you, Mr. Karunesh. Yeah.